Hey, everybody, how's it going? Jeff here from the Embroidery Nerd, and I'm double checking to make sure that my audio is on. So if you can't hear me, please let me know. Uh, today we have a special kind of episode. We're going to be doing a little bit of digitizing 911, but this actually didn't happen uh, coming in as a digitizing 911 design. So it's a little misleading. Um, but what we're doing is we are going to be digitizing a design that was submitted to us. Uh, and the question that was brought to me was, how would you handle this lettering? And so today I'm going to be going over um, this design and showing you guys how it works. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drop in the comments first and let you guys know who is here. Let me make sure I've got that button hit. And we have Eric Campbell listening while digitizing in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We have Debbie from Louisiana. How's it going, Debbie? And we have the other Campbell, Martin, here. I hear you. I'm glad you can hear me. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to grab Frank because he just popped in. Frank, how's it going? The man that never sleeps. So I'm going to bring up my screen here. I'm going to push all the buttons to make that happen. Maybe. I needed one more. And I've got it up. So this was the design that was brought to me. And it was basically uh, they wanted to know how we would handle the lettering as it goes. Um, it's kind of a little bit different lettering. It's uh, graffiti style. And I wasn't quite sure on the application of what it would be put on. So I just decided that I would do it for a hat because, well, most of the time it's either a hat or a left chest. And I believe that digitizing it for a hat is going to cover a left chest as well. So let me grab a couple more comments here. We have Carol. Hey, Jeff from Salem, Oregon. Hello. And Letter Letty Walker. Hey, Letty. How's it going? Glad you guys could make it. So the first thing I need to do with this art before I can digitize it is I need to size it. I need to make sure it's in the proper size. It should be because I may or may not have been looking at it a little bit before you guys came. Um, but I'm going to select all of the art and I'm going to look at the height. Um, I like to digitize it roughly when it comes to a hat. I, I stick around two and a quarter of an inch, two and a quarter inches. Sometimes I'll go up to two and a half, but usually I stick around two and a quarter because I'm not quite sure what type of machine they have and what type of hat they're going on. Um, depending on the machine, it might need to be under two inches, but we'll stick at two and a quarter for this. Uh, luckily, the width didn't become an issue. Um, as you can see here, it is 1.764. If you guys can see my mouse, if not, I'm going to actually bring on pointer focus so that you guys can see that, hopefully. <laughs> We hope. So I'll go ahead and grab another comment. We have Crystal. Hey, how's it going? And Carol says, where's Justin? He's not here. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where he's at, but he's not here. Uh, he let me know a little earlier that he wouldn't quite be able to make it. So I can see it looks like pointer focus is up on the screen. So that will be good. Now, drilling into this art here, we have basically three levels. We have a gray that is really hard to see. Um, at least for me, I'm kind of colorblind. We've got a white outline and we've got a black outline. Now, if we measure these outlines here, um, this one's approxim approximately, and I'm in inches and I don't want to be. There we go. Let's change that. I'm going to measure from here to here, roughly 0.45 millimeters. So really, really narrow. And from there to there, even narrower 0.29 millimeters. And at this scale, I'm just not going to be able to get those two outlines in that um, size. So we're going to have to give up something. And to me, if we give up one of the outlines here, it's going to be 0.64, almost a millimeter. So I would actually make this about 1.2 millimeters wide and I'd cut it underneath quite a bit um, so that we can get that taken care of. Now, I do want to start, you know, bottom up, center out. Uh, if I was doing this, I'd put it on a left uh, left panel because I'm, I'm really partial to the left panel placement recently, um, but don't always have to be. So we'll go ahead and start looking at getting this stabilized for a hat. I selected everything and I hit the K key on my keyboard. Uh, that locks all of the art. So now I can't select it. I can't move it. It is there. So we'll grab the run stitch because this is how I'm going to start. And I'm, I'm going to look, I'm looking right around here because this is where I do want to start. Um, and it's thicker in this area here. So if I'm going to have any problems, um, it's going to be a little bit better to hide it there. So I'm going to basically start there, go down a little up. And now I'm going to really jump up. And I can go either direction. I'm going to go here to the left. And I'll bring that down. 
and I'll go back up here and we'll come back around. So what I want to do and what I'm achieving with this is I'm tacking the hat down before I come back. Now with these two areas here being so narrow, I might just fill them in all the way, but I haven't decided that yet. So I'm going to just come back around there and I'm going to come over to here and we'll just go up a little bit because there's not that far to go and we'll start coming around. And I am going to just jump all the way out to the end here, come down there, 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 and we'll jump back. And what I'm doing with the stitch is I'm kind of starting to flatten out the fabric, um, pin it to the stabilizer underneath, and just generally I'm, I'm working to stabilize the area. So I can go ahead and go up here now, and we'll bounce down and down again, and we'll come back down there over down and back up and this should secure everything down really really well i'm not overly worried about the area that it's running in because that will be covered by the upper stitching so we can go ahead and do that and i'll come down about right there and let me go ahead and come out and actually i'm headed right back down to where i started and I'll just bounce up there and there. And I'll come right there and we'll end it. And now we've got this run stitch, which of course is in black thread for some reason. So I'm going to change that to white so that we can see it. It sits on top. Now my stitch length is two and a half millimeters, which really should be okay because this is just kind of base stitching. I'm not, I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to start right here and I'm actually going to go around. So... <laughs> Oh, all right. So Eric here says, if you if you need a co-host, I can always give you a hard time if you want. If you want to jump in, I'll send you a link. Um, I'm always up for fun. So let's go ahead and look here. Now I want to do an outline and I need to address basically, it looks to me like three areas here, here, four areas here, here, there, and there. So five areas. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, six areas that are all going to be closed off. And I want to make sure that I'm covering those as well. Um, I can do those in a couple of different ways, uh, just depending on how I want to. So let's just start and we'll see where we end up. I'm going to make sure that I'm at 1.2 millimeters is roughly what I want my satin stitch to be. And I'm going to offset it um, ever so slightly so that it runs in. And we'll just kind of go around here, bounce there, come in, across, down. And we'll come up to here. That should be okay. There, there. And we'll move around here. And I'm not worried about that portion yet because I'm going to cut back into it. So I'll just come over here, there. And there, there, we will see where we end up. Cut there, there. And just keep moving around. This is the really boring part. I wish I had more action for you. Maybe we could get some. Let's see. So I'm going to actually back that up one hit right there. And I'm going to end this right there. I'm going to change it to white thread. I don't know why I'm still digitizing in black thread. So we'll change that right now. If we change our colors or our settings before we select a tool to digitize, it'll set, it'll stay in that tool. So that is one of the things that's really kind of neat. Um, and I'm going to drop, I'll just end right there. We'll, gr we'll grab this and I'm going to come straight down. And I'm looking at the width as I do this. So... If I bring this inset just a little bit, I'm just going to fill this whole area. So I'll come right back up to there. And I can see that it didn't like that point. So let's just end that. We'll come down right down the middle. And we'll actually just make this a wider satin. So let's pull it out. Let's go to two millimeters right there. And I'm actually going to shift it a little bit to the right so that we catch that point. So let me hit the T key on my keyboard and 
I'm going to break this apart because I can actually throw this node. I can add a node here right there, and I'll throw that a little bit wider, add a node here, and I can bring it back in just a little bit. And that'll kind of allow me to address that one area without making the stitching way too wide. And let's go ahead and bring that back in and that back in right there. Of course, that affects that. It all affects itself. We'll bring that back down. And I basically just want to drag and catch all of these nodes. And I'm going to throw them a little bit outside there so that we make sure that we overlap. Because the important thing here is that we are overlapping. So the satin that comes down on top is actually going to cover that. And so I'm going to grab and grab this and bring it back up to there because we do want to start and end there. And now I can continue on. I do like to overlap just a little bit when I bring in these types of things. So we'll go up there, down, across. And it's really weird for me. That's why I'm like, I don't know why I can't see <laughs> the circle of my tool and now I know because I didn't have it selected. So we'll bring that there, there. We'll go ahead and come up. I need to bring that out just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Come out there, there. And the great part about this kind of art is that um, I don't think <laughs> the person, well, I know the person that sent it in is going to see it. Um, but usually with this kind of art, you can be a little bit more free um, with it because you don't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to end there and not talk too much. I'm pretty good at talking too much. So we'll jump in here. And I do actually want to catch just a little bit right here in that direction. And we'll end that. And now I'm going to come up there, there, and there. So one of the keyboard key short keyboard shortcuts you can't see me hitting is I'm hitting the space bar on my key. And what that does is it allows me to switch between uh, my last used tool. So if I bring this down here and there, and we'll bring it around. So when I come to this point over here actually is where I'm going to bring it to right there. And I hit the space bar key because I use run last. That's going to be my last use key or tool and so i'm going to run to here actually and i'll hit the space bar again and i'll run down this way there there and up so now we've got that taken care of and we can just jump from here i can digitize there Ooh, I want to catch this. So I'm actually going to catch that. Bring that there. Okay. Just making a game plan. Looking ahead and catching where I want to go next. So we'll actually run right here. Then we'll change that. Come down there. And this is all part of the fun. We'll come across there. That's going to finish up that area. We'll get to right here. Here, I'm going to make sure that I cross over and I'm actually going to jump down to here and we'll just go ahead and do that while we're at it. There and up, over. We will do this piece here from there to there. Hit the space bar key, come back to here. And I'm actually going to set in just a little bit, come across and we'll move around this direction there, there, and we'll get this outline here finished. And we are going to be coming around there, so that's okay. There, there, there. That one went in a little too far. Bring that there, there, there. Uh, wrong node. <laughs> that was going to bark at me there in a second. And we'll go there, there, across. And now we're going to hit the point again, and I'm going to make sure that I turn it to there and we'll overlap it just a little bit. So now if we turn on our true view and we hide the art, you can see what we've got going on here. And let's go ahead and make it black so you can see it there for a second. So that's going to be our outline. And we're going to end up putting all of the black on top of it. So I'm going to take that back. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to select by, select all, select by stitch type. 
and we'll grab it by satin, hit OK. Now we've picked up all the satin. We're going to look at some of our um, settings. We are at 1.2 millimeters wide. Our fills are at a 0.38. Now, because this is going on a hat, I do like to do a 0.35 uh, when I do my spacing on satins. And we only have, we should have all of them selected, but we don't. So I'll just grab them, which is okay. There, there, and there, there, and there. So I'll blow away my auto spacing. I'll go to 0.35. On the underlay, I do like to do a center run. Um, I like to shorten this up a little bit. So we'll go to two millimeters because this is on the hat. Uh, I want to make sure that I lock it down and we'll do a zigzag underneath it. And so now we've got all of the underlay set. You can see we have a couple of trims in the design here. Let's go ahead and path it really quick. We go there, there, to our next point there. Cross back up there to that point to there um and we just need to move that to there and now we move around cross there start and end there and we need to move our start point to there and then we'll bounce back up and now we only have one trim so i like that i do want to move my trim to the inside um if it's going to listen to me I move my stop point to the inside. There we go. I'll take that and I like to, when I do my connections on these, I like to have the number two connection here um, to lock back in on the inside, especially with satin stitches. So now we've got that taken care of. Now we're on to our text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide all of this. Whatever I did, I wanna undo because I don't know what I did. Back that up one more, and yep, there. All right, so I want to select all this. I want to hide it all, um, and what that's going to do for me, let's go ahead and grab these three and unhide them. So that's going to help me uh, with a couple of things. The first thing it's going to help is I'm not going to accidentally select them. I'm not going to move them, and they're not in my vision anymore, so I can move around without having to worry about it. So... Looking at this, uh, I like to do letters technically, typically how I write them. Um, for this one, I would do the point here, come up, and I'm going to do this a little different, a little differently than how I would write it. Um, but actually, let's just do it how I would write it. So I would come here, and we'll just start right there. And so. As I have that selected, I'm going to go there. I'm going to change it to a satin stitch. So now that tool is running into satin stitch. I'm going to change this to a 0.35. I'm going to go to my underlay tab, and I'm going to change that to a center run and this to a zigzag. And so now all of those settings will apply to the next every object I draw. So we'll start there. I'm not worried about the little bit of stitching that's going to go underneath there um, based off of the size. So I'll come here and across. And I'm going to bring it there and go there to make sure I come to where it meets. And I will go ahead and go back up like that. And that one goes there. I do want to turn this corner. I'm going to start just a little bit right there. And we'll come here, here. And we'll move around that corner. There come down and I want to end that. I want that to pull back in just a little bit. We might have to go back and fix some of those nodes. So I'll bring that there and now I'll cut back towards the R and I'll start my turn here. There, 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 there and I'm going to start there, moving all the way down. Let's go ahead and follow the object a little better. <laughs> I'm moving in the downward direction, but we're going to follow the object. Um, and I'm going to end it right here. And I'm actually going to change this just a little bit. So we're going to start right here. And I'll come down. I hit A key. I don't know what key I hit, but I hit one and it changed things. So we'll just fix that there. 
I'm going to come down here to about the center and I'll hit enter and now I'll do the other side here. There, 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 and there. So we'll end here coming across and there, there. And I keep looking. I'm focused on what I'm doing, I promise. But I keep looking over to see, make sure I catch all the comments. And I don't think I have, so I'll bring up a couple. Um, we have Dustin, if I haven't said hello. Hello, Dustin. We have Cindy. How's it going, Cindy? And we have Amy here. Ooh, I love that design. So I'm going to grab these first three objects that I've done. Yep, three objects that I've done. And I'm going to move them up in the order. I'm going to turn them black. And the last object, of course, is going to be black too. May as well fix that while I'm at it. So now we have this is where we're starting. I'm going to start there and end there. And we'll jump. We start there. I'm going to end right there. That one's going to start there and end there. And I'll bring that there. And now we can bring we can move our start point to there. And I'm going to move my end point up. That's not my end point. I'm going to move my end point up to there and my start point over to here. And what I want to make sure is that these two objects do come together. Right now, they're, uh, it's a little short. And so I might put that to, let's say, four millimeters for that object. And that's going to take away that trim. So now it's going to so we do have a trim here somewhere. That's from that object. We'll move that to the inside. Now that'll take care of that. So now we'll sew here, 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 and then it'll come up and do all of that. And it's going to come to the top here and work its way around. Kind of how I would write it. Uh, I do want to change a couple of nodes here. Um, and I think I can just get away with deleting that stitch angle to make that a little softer to go in um, into that curve. And I'll just make sure I want to, I'm going to move that up just a little bit too to ease the corner coming out. And that will give us the end point of being right there. And that now we can swing around and do this object as we come around. Now I'm not going to do this D yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and probably do this E and catch that. And then I'll come over and do the N and then I'll come do the arrow as it comes around. So let's go grab the run stitch here and I'm going to bring it. If I didn't bring this up, I'm going to bring it up. Um, I'm, I'm really focused. So love working on graffiti style pieces. The over under layering is fun to play with. Some of my favorite foam work in my library has similar, similar glyphs. And we have Kevin here who says, thanks Jeff. This is actually artwork from Kevin um, that he sent and asked, how would we handle the lettering? So that was what came up as the topic of the day. So I'll come up here. Um, I want to make sure that I catch this E first, this portion of the E first. And I really want to catch that right there. And I'm going to change that to black. And I'm going to change this when I grab the satin tool. I'm going to change it to black. So the objects that I digitize are going to start out in the correct color. So I'll come here and here. And I'll come in a little bit there and now i'm going to bring it from here to here and i could cap this joint but i'm not going to based off of the style of the art i'm going to guess that we're coming right there and we're coming around because that would be how i would write it and i'll bring that down just a little bit and we'll drop that in there and so now we have that e taken care of now we can run out with run stitch because we need to catch these ends like we did the last piece or the starting piece, I should say, which is down there. So we'll come to that area, hit the space board on my key to change tools there. And we'll go there and there. And I'm going to come to about the middle, um, drop that there. And again, on this side here, there, there, and I'm going to start poking it up there we'll drop across the middle and I went a little too high on that one <laughs> I do like to follow the art fairly closely but I do get to use my artistic uh what do they call that discretion that's the word I'm going to use artistic discretion so I get to use that 
Now, I know that looking at this art here, that this is going to turn. That's going to be a corner that's going to turn down. And so I'm actually going to prepare going into that like it's a turn um, because I want to make sure that this gives the appearance that we turned that corner. So I'll come about right there. And I'm actually going to come in just a little bit here to give it that angle that we're coming in. And now we've ended right there. And we can go ahead and go up to the top and we can run. And this is actually going to be shorter than I thought it was going to be, guys. <laughs> I honestly thought I was going to go the full time here. Um, not having Justin. I'm going to throw popcorn at Justin later. Because um, he hasn't been in the comments yet either, Justin. <laughs> uh, he, had a, he ended up with an emergency at work and had to stay late. And so I can forgive him based off of that this time. All right, now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to make sure that I come in just a little bit so that I can connect those two objects. They're close enough. I want to make sure that my objects are close enough that they either connect or they're short enough that Wilcom will put that extra little jump stitch in there for me so that I don't have to worry about that being done. So I'll come right here, here, and I'm going to bring it down. Let's look at this junction. Now, all of the other corners that we have, um, kind of round out. So I'm going to go all the way down here to the bottom um, because I want to make sure I'm matching that style. And I'm going to come in actually just a little bit uh, to overlap. And now I'll come back here and I'm going to go there because I want to make sure that I am matching the style of the art um, as it appears in with the rest of the corners here. So I'm just going to fold that there and come there and there. And if you guys have any questions, uh, comments, uh, let me know. You can throw stuff at me from there as well. So that kind of gives me that same cornering appearance that we've got right there. And now we can finish off this last piece. So I'm gonna drop a run stitch right here out to the point and cut back and we'll come in. there and I'm going to bring that out just a little bit more and I'll cut that back there and I'll bring that to right there and I'm going to cut in just a couple of stitches and we'll drop a node there and drop a node there and now, of course, I will go from the point. I need to make sure that I handle all the points the same so that they look uniform. And they look like they belong. If you don't handle, like if I handled this, if I capped this, it would look different than this corner and this corner. And so I want to make sure that I'm giving it a uniform look as I go. So we will come here and here and around this. And hopefully we can give it a little bit more of a flare there. I can see that we're coming off the art just a little bit. And I'm going to drop a note there and there. And now we'll start coming up this direction here. There. And we'll end it right here. Now we have that done. And I'm going to bring up a comment here from Martin. It says, I find that digitizing is the same as editing video. Everyone is going to do it different for a similar outcome. Exactly. Um, that's very, very true to the point in, in how we handle these objects. So, um, <laughs> and Carol, here a node, there a node, everywhere a node, node. Exactly. It's organized chaos as we move along. I'm going to grab. Now, I want to make sure you can, you can see that I have trims in here. Um, we'll go through it quick and path it. I put my objects close together for a reason, but we will path it after the fact. Let me get back into this window. So we don't have a trim there. We're okay there. We're good there up to that E. And we need to change that start point to the end point over here. So now that that grabs, that's going to come over there. It runs to that point. And I need to move that to there, that to there. That's going to go about to the middle. Let's make sure we're catching all this. We need to move that to the middle. 
and that can go, yeah, right about there. And that object's there. Yes, that's good. We're there to there. Let's move that there. And now we're moving along this. We come here. We're walking up here, making sure that I am starting and stopping in the correct points. That needs to come back down to here so that it, I really want those two objects to, to grab together. They're not going to, so we can come in here to our connectors and we can add some width to that. And now it's going to grab and we're not going to have to worry about it. We're going to come to there and I need to move this node to there. And now we move to there, down, there to there, there to approximately here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add that. We're going to add about three millimeters to that so that it grabs there. And now we're moving down through that object. And I'm going to actually change this. Um, I'm going to put it right there so that it comes down and it cuts. Now I want to make sure that it's coming down on this side because if it comes on this side, now you can see, actually I'm going to stick with that because that's going to put layer these joints. So we can change the way the joints are layered by where we put that, which, which goes on top. So I do want to cut it and end it kind of about-ish right here. <laughs> I don't really like to end my satins right on the end. So I do like to drop them in a little bit. So let's bring our true view and I'm gonna turn off the stitches here. So now that we can see our final trim and that we have packed it all together and let's drop that out now. We'll hide that again. And I wanna bring this white outline back up because there were some things that I didn't really like in there. And so we're gonna fix that as we go. Um, one of the things I didn't like here was how these corners were handled. So we'll go into the effects and we'll go into smart corners and it's mitering the corners right now. Um, I'd rather it cap them. So I'm going to drop, mm, raise that angle. We'll see. There we go. I'm going to bring that up and we're going to bring out the mitering. Now it didn't miter this or didn't cap this corner yet. So let's bring that up a little bit. It's not quite sure how to handle that. Actually, I'm going to look at the nodes. So that's coming down there and it's trying to do something wonky here. So let's bring that down a little bit here and we'll take a look. And so Carol, it says, what type of tie off are you using? So I use the standard tie off. I'll probably go in there and change it. Um, I prefer to do a straight line tie off versus the triangle tie off, which I can show here um, in a run stitch. So the triangle tie off goes like that. Um, and if you're running a satin stitch, you have the possibility of it catching stitches. So when you run this triangle, um, this would go in the opposite direction. It would come this direction and it would go there. And then it'd try to drop in between there, but it might actually cross some of those over. And I don't like that when that happens. So what I, what I prefer, um, particularly on satin stitch and lettering, is when I get here that I drop two points um, back. So that kind of gives it more of an inline stitch. It, it's still going to essentially fall off to the side a little bit, but it should be less noticeable. Um, you can actually play with that and experiment with that a little bit uh, in your software because that will, um, you will see the difference there. So um that's how i like to do it now i'm gonna come in here and i'm actually gonna cut that corner off because i don't like how it's handling it at all so we'll cut that with a knife uh the knife tool i should say we'll come across right there and now we have that separately we'll bring up the art and i need to make sure that i pull one of these um we'll make it that one that i pull it in just a little bit so it covers that and now i don't have to worry about that as much um it looks a little bit better it's not trying to really turn an extremely sharp corner and that's what i don't want is and when we come up here we kind of we may have to do the same thing it capped it there and i really want it to cap that there as well so let's go back to the corners and i'm just going to turn off miter corners and we're going to up that angle just a little bit so Bring it up a little higher. Now it's starting to throw things out that we don't like. And yeah, it's going to do the exact same thing. So we're just going to come in here. 
and we're going to cut that with the knife tool there and we will pull that one up so we'll just bring that up a little bit there make sure that we're covered in our art that'll take care of that and let's come here and see if we can cap the corners here we'll bring that up just a little bit and we're going to keep running into this same problem so i'm actually going to come in here and i'll just knife it right off the bat so that we don't have to worry about that and i'll hit the h key and we'll just bring that one in just a little bit um, is there a way, let me bring this up. <laughs> I'm leaving things on. So Everett says, is there a way to taper the end of a smart column stitch? So there is, um, and I will show that to you in just a second. I'm going to, I just want to catch the last couple of these. I'm going to take off miter and we'll cap, we'll bring up that cap angle. So it caps that one and both of those are capped. So that all looks good to me. And we will talk about capping the uh the ends here so let's go ahead and grab it's our column c tool i'm going to bump it up to let's say four millimeters so we can see it pretty well here and i'm just going to do a straight line so right now you can see it's a center run um it, it has all the settings that i've wanted applied to it but if we go into node edit we can't really change that so the one way that you can change that is you can actually go in and you can break it apart and when you break it apart it changes the object type and so now what that does is it puts nodes in the corner. So now I can taper the end. I can add some nodes here and I can bring those in. Let's see if this will work. And it did this time. So that's how you can change that. So you can digitize. And I often do this. I'll digitize an, a, an equal width uh, around a circle. And then I'll come in and break it apart and taper the ends. So that is how I handle that. Um, so yes, you can, you can taper the ends on those. So let's go ahead and bring this up. I'm going to bring up the top here and I'm going to unhide all of it. And now we've got our outline that's going to go first. And then we have the stitching that's going to go on top of it. Again, this is about two and a quarter inches tall. Um, because I just decided to do it for a cap. If I was doing this for, um, if I was doing this for a, uh, a left chest, I'd still handle a lot of the corners the same way. Just the underlay settings that I've chose chosen would be different. Um, so let's do a playthrough here. Uh, I always like to do a slow redraw when I digitize something because this will give me um, kind of an insight into any like major errors. Like um, sometimes with pathing, uh, order of objects, that's... Now's the time that this that the slow redraw really helps you catch that kind of stuff. So now it's doing the satin stitch, um, and then, and it looks like the underlay that I picked was what the underlay that it's doing. So we'll just let it continue on. Um, let's see here. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit, a lot of it. So we'll watch it go around here to the right side. Um, I'm going to speed it up a little bit more. Uh, this is if we had a super fast machine. I hear they make those now. <laughs> uh, so now we're coming up. We've got that corner. We're coming down and catching those corners. The inside there. I do want to come in here. I'm going to change that from a mitered corner to an angle. Um, we're coming around. That all looks good. Around there. And again there. And now we're coming up. And we're going to sew it in the order that we specified. And come across, go up, down, down, across, and bring it around there. So now we have that. I'm going to hide the black here to make sure that I catch all of my, um, the corners that I was looking at uh, somewhere here, right here, <laughs> this one. Um, we're going to go into the cornering here, and we'll just increase that just a little bit to get it to cap that corner and there was one other corner i wanted to look at as we went around um i believe it's that object we're going to bring that down just a little bit we're still going to cap all the corners there um and it's this object here that i'm cutting into and this is actually i'm going to undo that and this is where i'm going to break this apart because i want to change my stitch angles just a little bit right there to ease that and i can't do it with that column 
So I'll break that apart and now I'm going to grab onto it just a little bit and look at how I can ease this edge there into this corner and I'm actually going to bring that back just a little bit so we fill in a little bit better right there um, and move along. Now I am going to make sure because I did break it apart it did end those two objects and it moved our stop point just a little bit and it messed with our pathing. So I'm going to make sure that I always check for the pathing afterwards um, and move on from there. And it looks like, did I hit control Z? Sometimes I push buttons. <laughs> All right. So we've got a couple of questions. I'm going to fix that. And now I'm going to um, unhide this and I'll grab the questions that we have in the comments here. So, we have Carol that says, is the first stabilizing stitch is in addition to the center run underlay? It is. So the idea is, is that because of the way that a cap is held on to a flat, here we go, the cap's held onto the driver, it's held across the brim, right? And so the crown is pretty free floating. Um, and so what we do is we put stabilizer in there and then the initial stitches that are going to come down are going to come down and they're going to secure the center. So whether that's on the seam, it's going to kind of secure the seam a little bit. And then we're working our way from the bottom to the top. So we're securing, we're closer to where the hat is the most secure on the cap driver and we're moving our way away from it and we're moving out from that as well. So we're going to move and stabilize all of that area the best we can before we start really dropping stitches on top of it. The other aspect that we're doing in addition to that is we're also attempting to sew our um, stitches in that same order, uh, going from the bottom and working around. Now it is an outline, so we do have to start on one side and go all the way around. But that is in addition to the underlay. Um, we need, we're adding those stitches to help stabilize the area, smooth it out, um, and work from there. If we went away from that, um, let me go up here and find the first. If I delete that and we go and we start and we hit play, you can see how we're working our way up and kind of out from the center. Um, we might run into an issue when we get all the way all the way to the top. Here is it's going to start kind of pushing the fabric to the left. And so it's going to create a little bit of a wave. Um, I experience. <laughs> so it's going to start pushing out to the left and we could get a wave and we really don't want that. Uh, we really don't want it if that crashes over. So we're trying to control the way the fabric shifts by putting down that first kind of universal underlay. Um, I used air quotes. <laughs> you guys all saw it. So I'm going to undo that. And here you can see we've got this. I'm attempting to stabilize and work from the center out. Um, to make sure that we don't have issues with that. So we have Crystal here, have to put my kid to bed. We'll catch the rest on replay. Good night, everyone. Not a problem. We are here all week or next week. And Bevy Jean, sorry, tuned in late. We'll have to catch the start of the replay. Not a problem. So that is how I would handle that lettering. Um, we can change. There's a button here. There we go. We can change the color so that that... Uh, unsewn to selected nope solid color here we can change that a little bit so we get a little bit more of a contrast we'll hit okay there and now you can really see that outline um and that's the outline uh we'll, we'll sew down a stabilization stitch to attach the stabilizer to the fabric we'll sew down our white outline we're going to skip the gray outline because they're both just too narrow um if i wanted to kick another outline on the outside of that i could and I would actually put that outline down first and extend the stabilization out. And then we're going to come over the top of that with our black lettering. So that is how I would handle that um, to get that look that we would be going for, uh, the way I handle the corners and all of that. And again, this is all, you know, it is interpretation. If I handed this to Justin um, or Matt, they might, uh, they might attempt to do the lettering in a different order, a different way, handle the corners a little bit differently. Um, so this is my interpretation. There's definitely more than one, uh, but this is how I would do it. Uh, and so that's, since I'm the only one here today, that's what you get. <laughs> but with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about a few of the things uh, we've got going on. Justin just, uh, and I'm going to bring this up first because Eric specifies every digitizer is a little different. Yep. And it is the interpretation of the art that we're giving 
given to move it into stitches. Um, but with that, I'm going to run down with some of the things that have been going on. I've noticed recently, uh, recently this last week, uh, Eric has his uh, patch class out for sale now. You can purchase the uh, rerun of that. It is. I don't. I don't even know how much it is. I know how much it was to attend the live, and I can tell you it was worth every penny. Um, it is fairly long, so keep that in mind when you sit down, get ready to watch it. Uh, hopefully, Eric, I see him in the comments. He can drop a link to that. Uh, we have, uh, we just finished up Justin's last webinar. I think that was last weekend. Um, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Time's gotten a little crazy. But we finished that up. Justin's, that's the third in his uh, webinar series. Uh, it was really, really good if you want to attend that as well. Um, trade show season is coming up. Dax in Kansas City is, I want to say it's in a week. Maybe. I think it's on the 12th. Um, but Dax in Kansas City is coming up. We will be at ISS Fort Worth. Me, Justin, Matt, and Jerry Lee. Uh, Eric will also be there. And I do believe uh, Ramona McKee is coming down as well. So if you are going to that show, make sure you look for us. I may or may not have swag <laughs> that we're going to be handing out. Um, so those are the things we've got going on there. Uh, next weekend on the 7th at 4.30, uh, Eastern time, I will be um, interviewing uh, Teresa from Wilcom as well as James from Wilcom as well. They'll both be on the channel and I'll be interviewing them. I'm really, really excited because I don't hide it. Teresa is my favorite person at Wilcom and we'll have them on the show to talk a little bit about them and what they do at Wilcom. So I'm really, really excited for that. And that is coming up again on the 7th at 4.30. Eastern Standard Time, I had to think about that. I will be putting out another post on that and uh, advertising that a little bit. So uh, hopefully you guys can show up for that. It will be earlier in the day. Um, and I've ran over all the other things that I'm trying to remember. I need a notepad, but usually my sticky notes are on this screen. <laughs> and currently I'm sharing that, so maybe we'll drop that off. But uh, with that, you guys, I hope this helps you out in how you would digitize lettering. Um, Again, it is an interpretation and is my interpretation on how I would handle it. Uh, I am going to, I'm planning on it. I might do it tonight yet, but maybe not. I looked over at my machine. It's getting kind of late here, so I might run it tomorrow. I do plan on running this on my machine and getting a sew out, and I'll be posting a picture of that later. So um, with that, I'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with me, uh, and I will catch you all later. <laughs>